Welcome to Creating the Vision, another week where we are talking with another fabulous and incredible friend of mine, uh, Bianca Krausch. And I am going to um, start off, I guess, by one, welcoming you, and then yeah. two, sharing a little bit about how we met. So I'll kind of do an introduction, but we met at a Hey Mama event. So if you've ever heard of Hey Mama, but you know, they're also a kind of a women's entrepreneurial group. And this was at the start of my entrepreneurial journey. It was really when I was kind of testing the waters and deciding whether or not I wanted to rip the Band-Aid off, leave corporate. So I was actually still, I think, in my corporate role, but we were in the pandemic and they offered an opportunity for us to get together because we live in South Florida. You could sit outside. So it was um, a little bit easier transition, I think, for some of us in South Florida when it came to the pandemic. Life in South Florida seemed to continue moving on um, somewhat. But I, I grabbed a friend with me because I didn't want to go by myself. So you also met Dahlia, who's also who's been on the podcast yep. as well. And uh, Dahlia and I sat next to each other. And I think we both walked away saying that you were the, the only positive and good thing that we came out of that <laughs> oh experience. <laughs> and still to this day, you are. Yes. So I love that we've become friends and just the, the connection that we made with each other. But interestingly enough, then like we we connect and we go out to lunch and somehow we land on the subject of you being from Germany. So originally from, from Germany came to this country and you landed in Indiana of all places. And somehow, I don't know how the conversation got around to it, but we ended up having mutual friends. Uh, crazy how small the world is. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I think a, a couple of good things came out of the lunch, but I think yes, that yeah, we were, were definitely the most connected for <laughs> yes. us that came out of that lunch. Absolutely. Sure. Right. Yeah. There were some other beneficial things and conversations and connections, of, of course, but I kind of, I kind of, uh, I kind of looked at that whole experience and yes, if I were to pick out the, the one thing, it was you. That was the highlight. <laughs> that was the highlight. Yes. It was, it was, it was meeting you yeah. and getting to know you. But, um, and you, you know, you're a mom of three, you've been a business owner for 17 years and we're going to get to that because you own Talent Direct Agency here in South Florida, which is a thriving talent agency, placing adult and youth talent in film, TV, commercial, hosting, print, and a ton more. Um, you are also the South Florida branch co-chair for WIFT, I guess, which is Women in Film and um, uh, and Television, and the unofficial South Florida social chair for Film Florida. Yes, I get to do all the events. Yes. <laughs> Florida twice a year. Yes. Oh, my goodness. And what I... I've enjoyed so much about getting to know you over the past few years is just your knack for entrepreneurial uh, ventures and, and journeys. And I know that as a female, you are heavy into uh, researching, investing, and really getting women into the investing space. So uh, yeah, I just am so excited to have you uh, on the podcast because uh, I always say that like I, I have the most fascinating friends and I always try to surround myself with people who are way more interesting and way more fascinating and way more fun than I am. And you are <laughs> one of those for sure. But let's, I guess if we could maybe one, welcome. And then two, start start kind of your, your journey and tell us kind of, you know, this vision that you're building and creating. You can start at the beginning, you can start, you can pick up in the middle, but kind of what, what, uh, what is the vision that you are creating for your life? Sure. Absolutely. So, so, so glad to be here. I'm yes. like so nice. I mean, it's been so nice that we've been, I mean, I feel like really good friends ever since we met, like we yes. hit off right away during a pandemic Agreed. where yes. everything was crazy. Kids were home and whatnot. And we just yep. tried to figure out how to survive. Yes. So that was a really, <laughs> sure. it was great bonding for sure. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I started the company in 2006 and it was kind of a funny story, actually how it started. Um, I was, on the talent side. And I had a client that I was working with that approached me one day and said, Hey, you seem like you're pretty organized. We're doing this huge food and wine, oh, I'm sorry, it was Art Basel event. Um, and it's actually a, a sequence of like four sponsored events through um, MHUSA. So we had all the, you know, the big grand opening parties mm -hmm. for it. And he's like, well, why don't you staff the, the talent? I'm like, okay. I didn't even have a company at that time. So I was wow. like, I started accruing everyone. And this is like pre like um, unlimited cell phone plans. So okay. So yeah. I'm like organizing this whole thing. I think we booked like, I think it's gotta be at least 150 people. And these are like five foot 10 models. Like this wasn't promo work or anything like that. It was in the nature, it was very, it was, it was a live event. Mm -hmm. But um, at the end he was like, so which company do we write the check to? I'm like, 
what do you mean? And he's like, well, it has to go from a company to a company. Oh my gosh. And I was like, oh my God. So like I went and I tried to figure out how to like register a company online. So, <laughs> so the event was on, I think December 2nd through the 4th or 5th or something like that. And then on December 9th is when I created the company. And then I'm like, oh. and then I went to the bank and they're like, well, you have to have a business account. I'm like a business account. So that took like another week and now I'm like starting to sweat because all these people worked for me and I want to pay them and I want to pay them in a timely manner. And I couldn't cast this check and it was a nice, nice, huge check. And I was like, oh my God, what do I do? And mind you, at the time I'm 26 years old. I have no idea like oh. what's going on. So, and then, so I, have, I created the company and then I think on December 18th, I finally had a running business account and then I'm sitting here like handwriting checks and the old school way, like dropping them in the mail. Oh all handwritten, you know, gosh. like it's so different yeah. from where we are now. <laughs> right. So that's really how it started. And then it progressed to like, a, you know, word of mouth. And then, so I did basically high-end event staffings where I utilized um, South Florida's model talent that were mostly exclusively signed with fashion agencies, but that also wanted to pick up some side work. And that's really how the company started. And then in 2008, when the, um, when the, the financial crisis happened, I mean, marketing budgets is the first thing I think that got cut so we went from like humongo, you know, hundred people events that had really great budget to literally like, we'll book one person to, to stand at the door. And I'm like, oh my God, what do I do now? And I was pregnant at the time was my first child. And I was like, oh, I got, I got to figure something out. So that's when we realized that there's all this commercial and film work. I mean, I knew about it before because I'd been on that, like in that business, but I didn't mm -hmm. ever think about staffing that way. So then um, we started doing extras. So then they're like, oh, you have to have an agency license. I'm like, what's that? And then I had to look that up, got an agency license. And again, what happened was word of mouth. Um, I never have advertised. I've never bought a single ad in my life. I've never, wow. I think I just recently started paying for SEO, like maybe a year a year ago, like mm -hmm. post pandemic, you know, I was like, well, maybe we need to show up. Um, but that happened then. And then, you know, they started get um, asking me for union extras. I'm like, oh my God, what's that now? And then I had to get my SAG franchise. So it was really like very progressively. And I've been really fortunate. I think that my clients have liked to work so much that they're kind of working with us as we grow. So now obviously 17, 18 years later, you know, it's a little bit different, but that, that was what the first four years looked like. Wow. So when you were, okay, so you're from Germany. Yeah. Uh, and you moved to this country when you were 14. And when I was 14, my freshman year in high school. Freshman year of high school. Oh my gosh. That was, okay. really, that was hard because you, you're still trying to figure yourself yeah. out. I mean, I have a 14 year old now and I'm looking at him and I can't imagine moving him to another country. Like I just, I, th I think he would figure it out, but like, I just yeah. feel like my kids are so coddled. I don't even know that they, right. know, <laughs> that they would, could figure out what to do, but yeah, I moved to at 14 and then um, ended up in Indiana um, and then graduated from uh, high school there. I got picked up by a talent agent in Indy, um, which was really great. I had never even really like thought about that side yeah, of it. I'm 5'10", like, so yeah. like, I just yeah. got lucky. And I think this at the time it was just really athletic and thin. And so she kept coming back um, where I worked. I worked at Nordstrom and um, in Savvy, which was a, like a high-end designer department back then. And yeah. I just wore the clothes. I got really skinny tar partially too, because I wanted to wear the clothes that we were selling. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So she stopped by and I'm like, eh, whatever. It was my freshman right. year in high school. I mean, my freshman year in college. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. And then she came back again, like a year later. Mm -hmm. She's like, you really need to stop by. And then I was like, okay. So I went to go see her and I'm not joking. A, um, a week later, it was so crazy. <laughs> I, I booked a Bachelor Mishka fashion show in Cincinnati. So we had to drive over there. They, you know, put us up for two days and that was the first time I've had like stiletto heels on or they put hair extensions in. Like it was this whole like oh, thing wow. where I still have some pictures, but this was like the old, like when you did disposable cameras right. and like some of it worked out and some of so yep. I've got a couple of pictures from it, but I, you know, and I think it paid like a, it was like a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars and it's like, whoa, that's the most I've ever made, you yeah. know, in a day. That's crazy. And then from then on, you know, it just kind of picked up. I picked up other agencies around us like in, in the Midwest, Chicago and whatnot. And then um, it just, and I was still working full-time and still going to full, school full-time as I was doing this. As you were doing this, wow. So then what was the transition from Indiana to South Florida? So when I graduated um, college, so here, here's the thing, I don't come from an, well, I do have entrepreneurs in my family, but it, it, they're in another country and um, my immediate family, nobody's entrepreneurial. Everybody works for somebody. So the way that I was raised is uh, you have to work hard, and the harder you work, the more you get done. Mm -hmm. They also don't have a whole lot of women in my family that actually work. Um, I would say my mom was one of the few that had actually full-time work mm -hmm. or that continued working after having kids. So I didn't really have that 
I would say like that guidance of like, how do you do this next thing? So um, when I went to college, I didn't even have a plan. So I have, <laughs> I have three degrees and I didn't even have any plan of what I was going to do with that. I wanted to go to pre-law. And then once I got into like, um, again, to some pre-law classes and it was a lot of thing, things to do with like conscience and whatnot. Where I was like, oh, I don't know if this is for me mm -hmm. because I'm a very, I believe in my belief system. So I, I'm not, I can't. So it just can't deviate from that. Yeah. No, I just realized <laughs> not that's, not, yep. that's not for not me. To compromise. <laughs> yep. Yep. I get it. So I had a friend of mine that, um, worked for, um, like a local Fox uh, news station. That's a lot, a lot different than the, the current Fox setup. But, um, so, uh, he luckily brought me in as a, uh, like a national accounts assistant, or I can't remember what my title was, mm -hmm. but so that was like my only like first real job out of college. And a year and a half into it, I realized absolutely not for me. <laughs> I don't want to, yeah. like, I'm a creative person. I don't mm -hmm. want to, I didn't like my environment. I have great friends in India and I don't want to like put the city down, but like, it just wasn't for me at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I was yeah. like, you know what? I really want to explore other things. So um, they had an opportunity to transfer within the station to Florida. And then I got there and it was kind of like, they thought because of my name, Bianca, that I spoke Spanish. Oh, wow. So okay. there's a station, yeah. I believe in Fort Lauderdale. I'm trying to remember. This is like quite my name's time. Maria. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone assumes I speak Spanish. <laughs> yes, absolutely. My hair is about your yeah. color too. That yeah. now I'm like, okay. So I showed up and I called a, I called a, the contact. I was supposed to contact once I got there. And he's like, oh, do you speak Spanish? And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I speak German. And he's like, well, there's not much use for that. And if you want to do mm -hmm. ad sales here, you have to be bilingual, or at wow. least that's the, what was available at the right. time. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. So I'm here like sleeping on someone's couch with my car, like that's all oh. I had. I packed up my car and oh I moved down and I literally <laughs> shared a studio with a girl that was a model. So then kind of got introduced to everybody down here and then that's, it kind of took off from there. Wow. Oh my goodness. I did have one other real job. I worked for a uh, for hotel as a concierge when I first got here. Like after about three, mm -hmm. four months, I'm like, I have to have yeah, have to job have and insurance and whatever. So yeah. um, I did that for about a year and a half until I met my, my, my current partner in life. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So as you are building out, so, I mean, you come down here, it's all new, of course. You have this opportunity you think you're going to have, then it kind of shifts. Um, at that time, and I, and I don't know, maybe this is like, maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but were you thinking kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, this is what I want my future to look like, or uh, I have this goal, I just, I'm, I'm trying to get there. Like, like, I see it, but I'm trying to figure out how to get there. Or was it just like, you know what? here's the situation. I'm just going to like take it as it comes. Well, I think it was both. I think I always knew I wanted to do more and I knew what mm -hmm. I wanted. Like I knew I like a nice life. I like to travel. Mm -hmm. I like to do certain things like just in general, but I don't think there was like a concrete plan on how to get there. And I, it's so kind of crazy. Like now in hindsight that it took, I think it was my second child. So now we're talking like 2011. Yeah. So I started the company in 06. In 2011, when the second child came and I realized I really could not work as talent, like I had to give up. I was still doing, uh, I was a presenter for auto shows still. Like I did a bunch mm -hmm. of stuff just to have consistent um, cash flow coming in. But that's when 2011 is when I was okay. This is something here. We're growing. Mm -hmm. I had like my best year ever in 2011. I'm like, I got to just really focus mm -hmm. on, on growing this. And that's when it became a company. That's and it was a company before, yes. but that's when it was put like, okay, like I need not handwritten checks. I need a system. Mm -hmm. I need to figure out how to grow. I need to onboard people. We, um, before that we were building our own site. So my, um, other half, he's in, you know, in the domain space and internet space. So he ha we have a team that's been working with us for a long time that actually built on my website. We built our own communication system and I did everything like from scratch. And then I realized, Oh, well, there are agency softwares out there. So it's this like learning process. Okay. How can I become bigger, better, more efficient, more effective, how mm -hmm. to use my time properly. Yep. And that really started in 2011. So then we got like an agency software, you know, we got our QuickBooks accounts, like things every before that were very, very manual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, um, and I also think too, like, gosh, I think back to like those times, like 06 to even that 2011 time, time frame. And I have to think it must have been somewhat easier just because you kind of just were dealing with what you were dealing with. There weren't so many options. I feel like now today, someone says they want to be an entrepreneur. They want to start their own business. They want to freelance. They want to do this. And they have 800 emails waiting for them on LinkedIn. They've got all of these people trying to say, you know, take my lead generation. No, take mine. You know, let me build your website. Let me do this. And it's like, can I just make some money first? <laughs> like, yeah. You know, and, and sometimes I feel like the simplicity of building a business, I guess, earlier 
I was back in the day, but sometimes I, I wish it were that simple now. I mean, it, I, I said to my husband the other day, I was like, I, I swear, I, I feel like I spend two hours of my day just deleting like bogus emails or, or putting them to, you know, spam or, you know, pushing them in a different direction to where they're not my center of, of, of attention. And that takes energy as well for me. It's like, I just want to be able to build the business. I want to grow. I want to scale. I want to, you know, bring on more clients, do more workshops, et cetera. Um, and I feel like sometimes we, in this kind of culture, we don't appreciate like the hustle. We don't appreciate the fact that, and I mean, entrepreneurial, if you truly are going to make it and going to build it, I mean, you, 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 there's just no way around it. You're still going to hustle. Like it, you can't just sit at home and like have it magically, you know, happen. Um, you still got to make connections, build all of that. But I think sometimes, gosh, those were the days when you just physically received a check from someone. <laughs> Thank you for a job well done. <laughs> Thank you for the work. <laughs> Definitely. And I think it's also like pre-social media. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like that, you know, you, had, yeah. you didn't have like a, I have a almost full-time content creator on my staff now. Like that's all she does. Like, yes. It's just, it was different dynamics, but I think what I've gotten really good at, and I think as we get older, that's something that is very valuable to me is I say no a lot. Mm. I really say yeah. no a lot. I mm-hmm. unsubscribe, even if it's a friend's thing that I just don't think I'll ever listen to mm-hmm. here. Look here, I'm t- here to support all my friends. and But it has to align. Mm-hmm. And honestly, we only have so many hours in a day. Right. And I would rather spend them with my kids than deleting yeah. unsubscribe. And I'm really yeah. good about And I wasn't like that earlier, early on either. I think it was like somewhere in 2016, 17, where I was like, okay, that's just, I think it's when I had my third child. I was like, okay, I really have to like refocus and really, I can only look at things that will move my company ahead. And I still mm-hmm. do a lot of obviously 501c3 stuff and whatnot. So I'm, I'm not taking away from that, but it has to be focused. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if I feel like anybody's pulling my leg or it's just taking up a lot of yeah. time or it's just not productive mm-hmm. and then I have no problem saying, you know, thank you for inviting me, but I'm not, I'm not available. Right. Yeah. yeah. What, um, what would you say? So like, I think the interesting thing is, is that while you're building out the vision for, you know, your life and you're really creating, you know, you're creating this, you're also creating opportunity for other people to see the vision come true, you know, in their life. What does that process look like if someone comes to you? I mean, I know we've had kind of had this conversation a little bit just here recently between you and me, but it's like, you know, you, you see something in someone or you say, you know what, I think that there's an opportunity. Like, how do you kind of paint that picture for them? Sure. So there are a couple, couple things. I think, um, the, well, for the opportunities that we create, uh, we had a lot of resistance at the beginning. Um, we can't, we're, we're an exclusive agency in, in South Florida. There aren't very many who do that. Uh, most of them are in the fashion side of it, not really my space so much commercial print. Mm-hmm. We do have some fashion, but we're more focused on commercial, commercial print. Um, when we first started it, I remember everybody was like, ah, oh, you'll never, that'll never happen. And, you know, and we, um, there are some people that left the company maybe that were just looking for different things. And there are also a lot of people that came in that we, we, you know, we spend a lot of time with them. We really sit down. I take that very, I take that very serious. Mm-hmm. Like if, if I'm saying to you, go exclusive with me, I have to be able to offer something to you. And we get a lot of times we'll get frustrated talent or like, but I'm, I'm a good talent. Why won't you take me? I'm like, because you have five other agents and that is okay. Mm-hmm. It's just not how we operate. And um, I really want to have that relationship where you figure out how to work together in the next 20 years, grow Mm-hmm. Like this is, these are the things that you need to do. And it's really, it's a long-term process. If you want to do this full time, this is, this is, you can't just sign up somewhere and a week into it. You're the next best thing. Right. That can happen. Mm-hmm. That can happen that you like book a bunch of stuff. But at the end of the day, if you want this for longevity, there's going to be a glass ceiling unless you work on it. And mm-hmm. everything that's good, you know, you have to work for it. Yes. And it's just how it works. So, and there are people who maybe don't want to do that so much. And then we also drop them very quickly. And it creates this, obviously, sometimes a little bit of tension mm-hmm. in the industry because, but what, what they need to realize, there are certain parameters that we work within and there are expectations that you have to meet for this to all work. Mm-hmm. And not just for me, for you all, like forever, whoever's coming mm-hmm. in. And, um, you know, I would say the ones that we work with for the most part get it. They know what they're being offered and they know that they can also talk to us and, you know, if their situation changes or whatever, like, you know, we can talk about it and then we can figure out what the next best step is. And, if it's not with us, that's also okay. That doesn't mean I dislike that person or don't ever right. want to talk to them again. That just means that somewhere along the way, they've chosen to go their own path. And that is totally okay as long as you did it the right way. Yep. Yeah. But the, for the vision that we created, I mean, my team's on board. I have a really good team. I think that's key. Mm-hmm. I have a really, um, we, there's only, there's only, there were five and a half, I can say, of us. And then, um, you know, my mom works with me. My sister works with me, which can be uh, interesting dynamics yeah. sometimes. And, <laughs> 
we love each other, but then also sometimes when it's stressful, yeah, you're like, am I mad at my sister or am I mad at my sister at the agent? <laughs> like, what's going on here? And it's funny because yeah. at the end of the day, I have to talk to her because I'm like, oh, is somebody still picking up one of my kids? Or like, hey, what do I, am I still grabbing this for you? Like, you know, you, you right. transition from a, a family member to coworker. Coworker, right. Yeah, I, I always say um, Dan and I met working together, but it was a part time job. Like you know, it was just but but we enjoyed working together, and we work really well with each other. And so we always say that eventually, eventually, I either want him to I don't know join what I'm doing or us do something separate, like build another company, like a, you know that we can have together. Because I think we really like where I'm the weakest, he's strong, you know, and kind of like vice versa. So we really complement each other in that way. But yeah, I could see that there would be some dynamics where. <laughs> We might be at you know, Yeah, I've tried to work with my hard to try to work with Chad. I don't know. We we do yeah. on to some extent we do uh, work together quite a bit um on something different, but mm-hmm. it's always interesting. Yeah. He's very hard headed, I'm very hard headed, and then we still have, we're in the same house, right? <laughs> like where right. we're supposed to go. <laughs> we right. don't agree. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but it's but it's fun. I don't think I would want it any different. Yeah. No, that's I, I love the I love the dynamic that you have set up um, with your with your team and kind of what you're building and how you are still kind of creating this this vision. I love that you mentioned you know um, saying no, setting boundaries. I think that's something that is so hard, not just as an entrepreneur but as a woman especially, because it's almost as if we're hardwired to just say yes and and please. It's, it's like it's just like a knee jerk reaction. We just it's like, yes, what can I do for you? You know, how can I help you? How can I help? (laughs) You know, I'm here, you know, and in the back of your mind, it's like, okay, like mom's here, the problem suffers here. Like all of the different personalities or aspects of like who we are kind of kick in to gear. And it's almost as if we need like a shock, you know, to the system to say, whoa, 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 why are we here? Why are we saying we can help? Is it just because we are literally programmed to just, you know, go into autopilot and say, I'm here to help. Or is it that, you know, we, we truly can be beneficial and this is something that we want. And yeah. what are you giving up to help? Mm. Like, what is it that you're sacrificing? Cause you know, you already don't have any time. Right. You have three kids too. Yeah. Like it's just, yeah. there's no time. So like every time you pick something up, I forget, I wish I, I need to actually look this up. There's like a Chinese proverb that like, you can only retain so much information you had. And when you put something new and something falls out yeah. and I feel like the same as with your energy level, with your, mm-hmm. your task list, whatever. And I, I really need to look it up cause I've used it all the time. Yeah. Somebody told me this once and I'm like, oh, that makes sense. So do I really want to focus on all this stuff? Yeah, exactly. And then I narrow it down Then you mm-hmm. can still be of service. And I feel like yep. um, it's funny, we're busier than we've ever been before, but yet I'm on two different, a 501c3 and a 501c6. I get to like do all these event planning and we don't, we don't, you know, we're not paid for it. We do it because we believe in what we're offering and what these uh, organizations are offering. Mm-hmm. But it's like such a better feeling than helping maybe an individual that where my time maybe wouldn't be best placed to help them at that time. Mm. And I don't, I mean, it could be a midget, it could be a company, whatever, right. but it's just like, I can create something really big where 150 people can connect. Yes. And sometimes that's just where my focus is. That doesn't mean I don't care about this other person that asked for help. It just may not be something I'm able to do right now. Right. Yeah. I mean, and I think that um, what, and interesting with what I gathered too, from your, the proverb that you were talking about, you know, I mean, it's, there really is so much science in that too. I mean, our brains really are designed to focus on the things that we are, you know, focusing on. So even if it's the, the the simple fact of, you know, this is why goal setting this is so important or not saying goal setting, but like, you know, those habit formations, but keeping, keeping that vision that we want to create for our life, keeping it in front of us. That's why it's so important because important because, um, you know, people say, well, I wrote my goals down, but then they put them in a notebook and then they, you know, never go back. they never go back and look at them. Well, I mean, okay, well then you've forgotten about them, you know? Um, but it, it's as simple as the, the events that you design to help people, you know, you make that kind of your focus so that it stays in front of you. And the events are, you know, and I know even the ones with WIFT, cause those are nonprofit as well, right? That's mm-hmm. all volunteer. Both, yeah. Both of them are. Yes. And I've attended some of those. And here's the thing, like I, I've always, you know, I, I think in a, in a former life or had I gone like a different direction or path, maybe had a little bit more guts to like go in that direction, which I feel like now in my forties, I'm kind of like, you know what? I'm fearless. I'm like, I'm just going to do it. You know? And you and I've had this discussion and conversation around like, we're, we're just going to go, going to see go what happens. It. Go yeah. for it. You know, what's the worst that can happen? You know, no one, no one uses me to host their event or MC or, you know, or, or asks me to, you know, be a part of their, their, um, event. 
oh, well, I, you know, I didn't really lose anything. I just, I put myself out there, so, but. And that wasn't your person anyway. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but I think it's really cool because, um, if, and, and these events, I mean, they happen, I know all over the state of Florida, but then there are they, are they in other states as well? Well, so Women in Film and Television is a, they're a national organization. So we're only the South, so we, I say my, because my sister's the other uh, branch co-chair. So okay. we are only responsible for South Florida. Okay. And then Film Florida is an, uh, obviously a nationwide, I mean, a, nation, a statewide organization. It's our 501c6. That's our lobbying mm-hmm. uh, portion for the film industry. Also, um, the we, so we participate with all of their, obviously, uh, quarterly meetings and whatnot, but um, we have started now um, hosting their biannual like South Florida because a lot of us in Orlando, Tampa, mm-hmm. Tallahassee, because that's mm-hmm. the nature of, of what the organization is. Um, we're, we've created um, two networking events uh, twice a year is that the local community can get together. So they don't have to necessarily, I mean, we're such a big state. You right. have to like break this up. And- you do. Yeah. Yeah. As I think people don't realize that sometimes it's like, you know, yeah, it's it's an eight and a half hour drive to like the panhandle. I mean, it's, you know, and you're still in the same state. So it's, I think it's you can just be in the same state for 11 hours, right? Yeah, I'm pretty I think sure so. like from the top to Key West. Top, yep. To Key West. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, it's just, there's, there's a lot. And, um, but I love the events. I think if anyone, like, you know, I would just encourage anyone to go and attend the events. You know, I think it's what, like $10 yeah. to attend. And if you remember, it's free. And then honestly, like the last one, we, well, we did this was for, um, from Florida, we did the uh, 25 year anniversary event at Lobardo Advertising and they have a beautiful space. They just moved in um, on Clematis, like to a new space. Gorgeous. And I mean, honestly, I thought that was just such a well put together mm-hmm. event. We had 150 industry professionals, you know, but a lot of producers, direct, a lot of people came up from Miami just to network at this event. And it was just so cool to see. And a lot of them were like, yeah, we've been following you on social. Cause it literally, it was one of those things where literally everybody made a point to introduce themselves. And you don't, in South Florida, always find that. Mm-hmm. especially the further south mm-hmm. you go, I feel like you right. have a little bit less of that. And um, it was just, everybody wants to work together. Coming out of a pandemic, having, you know, um, production really decrease all over the United States. I mean, increase in a sense, but decrease in what's accessible to you locally. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Florida has done a um, pretty good job of staying busy. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was just cool. I think everybody was just like ready to go. I went to an event uh, sponsored by Le Book, who's like, um, they're like a directory for um, industry professionals in our industry. One's like on the fashion side, one's on the commercial and film side. And uh, same thing, I I think they only had maybe about 50, 60 people in Miami, which is not a lot considering it was a free event. Mm -hmm. And I've I've liked Book for a long time. Miami's huge. So it is huge. Yeah, Yeah, but people Mm -hmm. just aren't as willing to attend events there. I think they're just bombarded with a lot of different opportunities. So you have to really look at, okay, this makes sense for me. That makes sense for Mm -hmm. me. And I get it. So I think LeBook, not everybody's familiar with it in does neck of the woods. I think the New York and LA ones were much bigger just because they, they already, they know them better. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it was, I would say there were only 60 people in the room and every one of them was a decision maker. Every one wow. of them was a doer. Every single one of them we've connected with since then we've worked together. Um, maybe some of them have not worked together on yet, but there's stuff down mm-hmm. the pipeline. And that is just what you have to do. Like, I think if you want to be no matter what you do, if you want to be successful, especially in creative spaces, you have to go out there. Like you have to, that's, if you're an actor, if you're a producer, if you're a director, you have to get out you have to support your local community and especially a community like ours that's lost film incentives. And it's really hard for us to compete with um, Georgia on, on the incentive side of it. That's why we don't have any film here really hardly wow. is because we lost our film incentives. We don't have them. Every other state has them. And then the ones around us have really good ones. Wow. You just, we can't sit on the sideline. Yeah. We have to do something. And when yep. we, um, we came out of the pandemic, my sister and I sat down together and like, okay, what can we get into? What can we do? And that's how WIF came mm-hmm. along. And then Film Florida had sponsored before. And we were a member, and, but we weren't super active. But again, I think it's just small kids. Couldn't, couldn't get out there. My, my youngest is now seven, so it's a little bit different playing field. Um, but now we're just like, okay, what can, what can we do to participate? And we don't make a dollar from doing all this stuff. It is through the connections and the incoming mm-hmm. work and the opportunities that we now create for our talent. That's how we get our payback while we're doing something really good and creating a community. Yeah. And I'm really big, as you know, like into community yes. building. I mean, that's yes, like, I know. That's my favorite thing. Too. Yes. Well, and I think you and I both align on that too. Yeah. Just building those like meaningful relationships, yeah. not like networking for networking's sake, but like to truly build a relationship. And I know we're both a part of the daily drip and I'm going to get Romy and Nicole on here sometime. Yes. Yep. We, we got to have them, but yes, shout out to our daily drip ladies. Love the daily but, drip. Yes. <laughs> but you know, for South Florida business women, cause that connects you even further. And I think that then you start to I think the, the beauty in that is that then people start to see this this vision that you are creating, not just for TDA, 
you know, but for, for women in film and television, really the promotion of like, let's, you know, let's elevate these women. Let's give them an opportunity to hear from producers. I mean, we, we did the tour of, I've done a tour of a studio, I think with you, and then the tour of the, the station up in, in West Palm mm-hmm. or Palm beach. And both were fascinating. Like as someone who just kind of enjoys that and, and has a little bit of that theater background and artistic background, it was really neat to just get into a studio to see kind of how things are done, how things operate. Um, and, and I think that providing those opportunities, and of course they're men and women, but I love that, uh, and I mean, we have uh, the Barbie director who just now has, you know, surpassed and made, I think the most as a female director, yeah. which- Surpassed the billion dollars. The billion think. dollars, yeah. And so so I, I love anything like that that kind of elevates and shows women this can be done. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we're trailblazing, we're, pa- we, we're paving that path, we're creating those opportunities to help women kind of see where, what their future could be, you know, could become. Um, but it all goes back to what you said too, at the very beginning that it's hard work and it's the long game. Um, you know, interestingly enough, you, you probably are, um, I can't even know. I don't even know how many guests at this point that I've had on the podcast, but every single one of them have all mentioned, if you are in it for the short term gain, then this is not the right thing for you. And and that doesn't, that's whether you are corporate entrepreneur, um, you know, running your small business, a startup, a freelancer, a stay at home mom, (laughs) you know, like if you're in it for the short game, like it ain't going to work for you. You, it's about the, the long game and it's about what are we doing every single day to lay that foundation so that the vision that you see off in the distant, you know, future can actually happen so that when you come up on it, you know, it hasn't passed you up because you just didn't put in the work. Yeah, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And mm-hmm. then also, I think yeah. I think um, you're just we're never coasting. We're never done, and you mm-hmm. have to really you have to be okay with that. I know a lot of people are okay coasting. Yeah, and that is that's okay. Yeah, that's just not going to work. I don't think in this industry. Mm-hmm. And there are some industries I think we can kind of kind of do that. But that's um, yeah, that's if you're just okay being where you are. Yeah. yeah. But I really want to like surround myself with people who are like, okay, what's next? Mm-hmm. What's growing? And then yep. you go through phases too. We may not talk to each other for a minute because we're so busy. You can't even. Right. And then and then you reconnect and it's like you never even left off. But then also you cover a lot of ground. And right. I feel like that's what you were saying. Like it's a mm-hmm. meaningful meaningful relationships. And that's the same thing that we want with our talent. I don't want them in for a year. You look, if they grow and they want to go to California, of course we're gonna. We're going to support that, you know, right. best of luck to you. Mm-hmm. But we know what our um, parameters are that we work with in. And if it doesn't make sense, that's, and that's okay too, then mm-hmm. we just, we go to the next step. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So I want to cover a couple more topics. Yeah, sure. Um, one is the strike, the SAG after, you know, the, the WGA, yeah. how is that impacting, you know, currently your business or placing talent? What is that doing for your industry? So this is covering mainly film and television, which because we don't have any incentives in Florida, it really doesn't cover, like it doesn't affect much that we're doing here. Uh, we do submit our talent out to all over the U.S., obviously for film, and that we've definitely seen a humongous decrease of opportunities that we can submit mm-hmm. to right now. So we're just waiting to see what happens. Um, it doesn't affect commercial at all, and uh, Florida's 80% commercial commercial oh, print wow. work. So it doesn't, okay. um, we don't see okay. it so much, but I think um, maybe more in North Florida agencies mm-hmm. as well as people just, with, I mean, we do have a really heavy film team, but because there's never been that much here and we're submitting out of state and we do book quite a bit out of state, but um, you know, it's not as impactful for us right mm-hmm. now, even though we're fully supportive, obviously, of what's, what's happening. Of what's happening, right. What, um, okay, so the film incentives, I think that's interesting because we used to live in Atlanta and I remember um, they used to film, you know, they filmed Walking Dead. They filmed, uh, I think, uh, Vampire Diaries. Like, you know, they built like the whole set down in that area. And I think some other shows too, maybe even, um, yeah. So I mean, there's studios. a lot of Tyler Perry, stu- Tyler Perry Studios, like all that. Yeah, all that was kind of building up and really, really being enhanced as about the time we were leaving to, to, to head to Nashville. And I feel like Nashville has some some pretty good incentives as well, just because we I interviewed a, a friend of mine, Jeff, recently as well, who owns his own uh, production company, Riverside Entertainment. And I probably need to connect the two of you yeah, <laughs> for some awesome. work in, in Nashville. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're Nashville and LA based, but you know, he, he was kind of sharing just kind of about the dynamic of their business, but in, but I find it really, uh, I guess, interesting to think about, uh, these incentives and that's what brings them to. And so that's all at a government level, right? So that government level impacts what you guys are able to do. Mm-hmm. Wow. So not, but not only was, was that all um, omitted from any kind of budget for our state? They've also now uh, renamed, they kind of put the film industry under tourism. 
So we don't even have the oh, there's not even level the, yeah, the aid film not even a line item. Yep. Oh my goodness. So we went really from being the top. I think we were the third state, when, like right in the middle of when I, you know, when we got into this. Mm-hmm. Um, to I don't even know where we're at now. We're like not even top ten. Oh my goodness. And it is so sad because we just have everything here. Mm-hmm. But we, we really do have do. a new studio coming in um, that's being built in Fort Lauderdale. It's 300,000 square feet, um, 10 to 12 sound stages. Because what's been happening a lot now, too, is that a lot of the studios are, there's so much content being produced now that a lot of the studios are backlogged. Mm. So sometimes you can't get it. Even if you have everything, you have the budget, you have the people, you have everything. Um, you can't uh, produce your whatever you're doing for a year, year and a half. So new studios are being built. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what that does. And I hope, I mean, we'll just continue doing what we're doing and figuring out They're ways. Figuring out, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, Dade County and Broward and um, Palm Beach now have their own film incentives. They're on a, a smaller scale. They're not as as big as right. what we had back then. I mean, the problem was too, we, there was a pretty big budget, but it was first come, first serve. So that wasn't really an oversight of who was using up the incentives when it was here. And honestly, you know, when you pay taxes statewide, but most of your incentives are targeted in maybe Miami-Dade, which that's what was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, I can see where there would be frustration. So it, it and now in hindsight, obviously we're always smarter. Right, <laughs> but, right. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I mean, for us, we're just trying to figure out how to make this self-sustainable, mm-hmm. how to create, you know, keep, continue creating an industry, how to educate people coming in. We've pulled quite a few projects that um, into Florida after um, clients connected with us and we're like, mm, you know, we just want to try and like, see, you know, if we can do this there and then we'll give them what the options are. And they're like, oh my God, we actually can do this there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we still fly a lot of people out. So, I mean, there, we have something here that's very special. Yes. Yeah, there is a lot. There's there's a lot here that can be done. And I think that's what's really cool. Just the, the few studio tours that I've been on, you know, as a part of WIFT. Um, yeah. Wow, which is really neat. Um, okay, so then I know we, we talked a lot about, I mean, you're a mom of three. So I think that it, of course, like we have to, to, to we have to discuss, yeah. you know, being a mom, being a business owner, an entrepreneur, um, you know, what is that dynamic like? I mean, how do you, how do you do all the things? How do you manage? Well, I mean, it depends on which year you ask me. <laughs> right. um, so you know what? I mean, when we were working from home which is until 2011, um, it was super hard. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had two small kids. They were always screaming. I would literally tell clients when they called me. It was probably in the car going somewhere. Didn't come, go, I've always had them with me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, look, I can hear you. If you can ignore the screaming behind me, give me what, <laughs> what it is that you're asking for. Right. And, then, and I have had such luck that 80% of my clients are women, I would say. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, fine, no problem. I'll text you. I'll give it to you over the phone. I'll email you. They mm-hmm. knew that I was going to get it done. So that was never a problem. Being a mom never kept me from working, but I was working 12, 14 hour days. And I, I, we were just, I was talking to my oldest son the other day because um, I can't remember what we're talking about, but I'm like, you know, I'm like, I have like total like memory gaps from like oh. when he, between like when he was like two to five, I think Same. I don't remember very much at all. Like I'll remember like maybe this event or that event, or I'll see a picture. I'm like, oh, I remember that. But I have a complete memory gaps like where I'm just like, okay, were, was I even with you? Like, was I safe to drive? Cause I have right. no idea. I, mean, yeah. I was just running. And, um, I don't know if you know this, but like, you know how you have like one circle on here. I tell this all the time. You can have three circles. It can have actually three indentations and I have pictures of this oh and I God. do not like those pictures very much at all. And luckily my space went away. So that's some of that's gone. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. When was, when was Facebook started? 2008, I think seven, seven, that eight. That was my space, right? Yeah, because I feel like I feel like I have my haven't had mine since '08, but that was when they opened it up to everyone. Yeah. Like before that, I feel like you had to have a, a yeah. college address. Yeah, yeah, you had to be in college just, to uh, access I know, it. Chad is a, one of the first fifty, like, uh, five thousand or something like that, or five or fifty. I can't remember now. I would like to have a Facebook. That account. doesn't surprise me. I that's got also, yeah. it's gone. So it's yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, and, and yeah. I think it's just the dynamic was always like, well, especially when we were first when we we're here. And then with two small children, I just didn't have any family here. Mm-hmm. Um, everything that we did had to be like outsourced or we had to ask me to come in. And also I think, and just to go back to what you were saying earlier with women supporting women, I think that we have a really hard time asking for help. Mm. And I know I do. Mm-hmm. And I really, I don't, you know, never thought I could maybe get a loan. I never thought um, that I'm like, well, I still have two hours, so I can just do this myself. And you, like to get from that mentality. And I think that's also how I grew up um, to getting to a mentality of, you know what, if I invest $75 back then, it was just like 2008, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if I invest $100 a week, then somebody comes and cleans my house, then I'm not constantly in this deep, dark hole where I'm like trying to work, raise two small children, and you know, both were two under two. So yeah. like, how, how do I do this? And that's when the company really took off. I remember um, going to our summer house 
and it sounds silly to say summer house when I'm like talking about whether I have a cleaning leader or not, but I just didn't, yeah. I didn't think I did. I didn't yeah. think that wasn't part of my mm-hmm. thinking process. Right. And, uh, it's, and I really had both my kids with me. We had like 19 doors going out to the pool and I would try to, I staffed 11 shows that summer. And this was still when we were still doing extras. I had like Charlie's Angels, the Glades, Graceland, and I was by myself. Oh my and it goodness. was just like, I mean, and I had a casting director, I won't name him, but like he would literally call me at 5 a.m. We need 40 more people. And, and so I'm like, I was like, team no sleep. My baby wasn't sleeping through the night. You know, and it was just like, yeah. it was this really stressful summer where after um, I came back from that, I hired my mom. Yeah. Like to help me with the business. Yep. And she would, she was working nights and weekends. And then eventually she came over, I think 2012 full time. And that's like, that's how you kind of do that. I think you just bring in help. And in 2013 or 14, I can't remember now, um, I started looking for a business coach because I wanted to get more, like, I just needed to get mm-hmm. more productive. Yeah. And so then he more helped me like do a bunch of, uh, mm-hmm. brought a bunch of systems in. Um, I hired another person that she's still with me. She's a friend as well as a colleague. She started, I think in 2011. So that's when it started all kind of growing. And then I was able to organize a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Plus I had both my kids in daycare Yeah. at that point. Yeah, which helps tremendously. That sure. in and of itself. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, you feel so bad when you drop them off on their first day, but then also like for my own, san- for my own sanity, I yes. love to work. Mm-hmm. And I'm somebody who like, if something goes wrong, I use work as my outlet where some other people maybe eat or, mm-hmm. or drink or go to the gym, whatever, I work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so every, anytime you can tell something's wrong, it's like I'm working 14 hours a day. Yes. Um, so I think that you just have to figure out how to organize that and not lose yourself mm-hmm. in the middle of all of that because you're, all you're doing is running. Yeah. At that point. And yes. so I think that's, I think to go back to the balance, um, actually I have a little tattoo says be here now. And I've daily did that mm-hmm. because it was just, I felt like I wasn't present anymore mm-hmm. with the kids. And so I really had to make some lifestyle changes, which I did. I started working out at Orange Theory. Like it was just a bunch of things that I, I put into mm-hmm. place too, to make sure that I was showing up the best version of myself in every facet mm-hmm. with every hat I wore. And I'm sure he probably, yeah, you know I mean, this goes. yes, all of this resonates with me so much. And especially when you said like, you look at pictures and you're like, oh, I kind of remember that. It just, it, some, some, a lot of life for my younger two or sorry, my older two, when they were younger, it just seems like a blur. Um, and to your point, I think with the third, it was like almost my like redemption, you know, it was almost my opportunity to say like, okay, I have a, ch- I have an opportunity now to get this really right. Like to really be present, like soak it all up and not just you know, not just kind of go through the motions because I'm chasing, you know, uh, this, this goal or trying to be, be, be all the things for everyone else in my life, except for the people who need me the most. And so it was an opportunity for me to kind of say, you know what, I'm going to take this back now, like reset. It is right. Yeah. <laughs> recommit to like. But do you first know, you know to, to first two know? Because no. I feel like, see, my mind say stuff sometimes. Well, like, you're so here for River. And yeah. Like, uh. <laughs> so my daughter, interestingly, the other day was in a part of a conversation. She's like, I don't remember you being gone all that time. And I was like, well, that makes me feel better. But at the same time, you had gotten to the point where when I would leave, you, she, they stopped asking me like, when are you coming back? Or where are you going? It just was, it became the norm that mom's leaving. So I've got grandma and I've got dad with me, you know, or, you know, and then for a while, you know, now the interesting dynamic too in our house is that, uh, you know, Dan and I's roles have flipped, you know, tremendously. So he's gone, you know, all the time now and, and, and I'm, I'm home. So I'm more present in their lives. And, and so there for a while, when that started transition started happening, it was, you know, where's daddy going? You know, when is when is he coming back? And, and now they're kind of like, Oh, 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 da- dad left. He's gone. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so, he's not here. <laughs> he's not here. Right. So they've adjusted. I think it's made the older two very resilient, uh, and very adaptable and flexible, but at the same time, I just, I think I'm the one who harbors the most like guilt and frustration from that time period. Again, I think that's what we do. Yeah. I yeah. think it's always, I mean, I feel yep. I dropped River off. She was only four and a half weeks and I put her in a daycare because that's, I didn't know the, per, the person was working on, that was kind of my right hand. Um, while I was out on uh, maternity leave, the two weeks that I actually took, um, <laughs> quit because I had a better opportunity. And he's like, we have yeah. to come meet. I'm like, I can't come meet you. I just had a C-section. Sorry. Like, I'm just kind of yeah. bound here for a yeah. minute. Okay. He left, and so I had to make a decision, but I was so lucky that I found a daycare uh, that was literally the parking lot next to my office, and they were amazing. They had a nursing room and all this. Like, it was just an amazing experience. I couldn't have, I cried the day that I dropped her off, but then I ran over every two hours, yeah. and I had that time with her, like, in between work, and I don't, mm-hmm. I think I got super lucky. Mm-hmm. Really, what I should have done is brought somebody to my, ho- my home, but I can't focus at home. At the time, I couldn't focus yeah. at home. I needed to yeah. be out. I'm learning that. I'm learning that it's really hard for me to focus I know. at home too. Yeah. I find all the other things except for work. Yeah. I'm in a yes. co-working space and um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
so much better. <laughs> yeah, definitely recommend. Yeah. Okay, so last question, and sure. I ask every guest this just because I think it's really fun. It's just really fun to, to hear their answers. But, um, you know, as part of my process, and I know you've done vision boarding with me in my house. I do it every December. I bring a core group of my my female friends together to um, basically just say thank you. You know, and I love, like, saying thank you to the women who've, like, continuously supported me, shared my content, you know, just been there for me, encouraged me, every, all that. And so you're someone who always gets invited to that. And I know that you so you participated, but, um, you know, one of the last goals that we have is kind of this like play slash fun goal. Um, it's like that bucket list item that we've really re re recoined, rephrased, returned, whatever you want to call it, but like the do the dang goal, you know, it's that goal that like, you're like, man, like that's the one that I just keep putting off or, you know, it, it's like the, I'll do everything else, like, except for that goal. You know, it's kind of like when we say as moms, like we put ourselves last or, you know, it, it, as women, especially, you know, we don't want to ask for help. We don't want to ask for that goal. We don't. That's the one. What is your do the dang goal? So I actually have two. So, you know, I did okay. the vision board with you mm-hmm. and I literally had it on the, the right of my desk the entire year. So I, and I hit all my goals, which I'm like super excited about because I didn't even realize as yeah. I was hitting them that I hit them. But then I looked yeah. at it at, at the end of the year because I was taking it down and I'm like, oh, so I looked at it and I'm like, okay, so the two things I did not do was learn Spanish and start my own tequila company, which is not a small goal, but that's <laughs> right. been my goal yeah. for like, we spent some time in Mexico, as you know, I'm a te- Yes, te- I know, we need tequila. to revisit this together because we've well, talked about this. Name, yes, yeah. as we talked about, so yep. main contest, and I still really want to do it. I just, I if I do that, that's such a big project, I have to right. fully do it. Yeah. That's so it's going to be on my vision board until the end of end, and I really, I still really want to do that. That's like yeah. the one, that'll be something that's my creative, that'll get to my creative outlet mm-hmm. that I, yeah. I have it all, like, I know exactly what it's going to look like. I, I just need to I love find the time. And I love this. Yes, I love your do the dang goal. Absolutely. I want to be a part of your your goal. Um, yeah. And I love that because I think that, like you said, it's still it's still becoming, it's probably going to be on your board, like you said, for the next five years until until it happens. But I love that you have it in sight and and that's your that's It's going to happen. Yes. It has to happen. Yeah. Oh, it will. It will. Yes. And we're, we're both going to learn Spanish Even if we only too. produce 200 <laughs> bottles and only we drink yeah. it. Fine, Fine. Whatever. It'll be ours. It'll be ours. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll be able to enjoy it for however long yes. it takes us to drink those <laughs> bottles, <laughs> which between you and me may not take, yeah, may not <laughs> take as long as we think. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, well, I just absolutely adore you. And I'm so thankful that you came on, shared the vision, what you kind of do, even, you know, in the community and for those that listen out, because, you know, I have family and friends all over, which is another aspect of kind of what I do that I love. But where can people find you and connect with you? Absolutely. So um, mostly I would say right now, Talent Direct. So um, mm-hmm. you know, Instagram, Talent Direct, uh, LinkedIn. We're, we're really active everywhere. You can find us on Pinterest, uh, Twitter, uh, YouTube. I mean, we're, we have an account everywhere. If you go on our website, talentdirect.com, you can see all the different icons. We're actually relaunching our site. Um, it was supposed to be up on my birthday last week, but it didn't go up. So by the end of next week, it will be up. Okay. And it's much more... Um, a much more um, inclusive website of what we all do. I think sometimes that stuff gets outdated when you add new divisions, but your your online presence hasn't caught up to yet to what mm-hmm. you're actually doing. So that's yeah. that. And then I don't think that my own is like that developed. <laughs> so yeah. It's just talent act. And then obviously yeah. women in film and television, fl.org is um, the WIFT site. And then filmflorida.org is the 501c6 that we work with. Incredible. Oh, thank you so much, thank Bianca. You. I just... Oh, I just think you're spectacular. We always have fun at yeah, <laughs> we do. We do. We always have fun. And I'm looking forward to collaborating more through Daily Drip and through some of the other things that we are working on. And we're going to get this tequila. It's going to be made. Yes. Yeah. It's absolutely. Yes. It's going to happen. And to everyone who's listening, honestly, if you find friends that you can, you know, that where you have the same goals and the line, like mm-hmm. make sure you keep communicating with, keep those friends in your life. I think that's, I think that's what all women need. Yep. Anyway. Aw, I love that. That's such a great way to end it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. (laughs) Yes. (laughs)